All right. Hi, everybody, and welcome to 15 and 15. Uh, we have these every day at noon, uh, Monday through Thursday in September. So we hope to see you back here for the other ones that interest you. Today, we're going to jump right in, and I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Martha Burgess. Go ahead, Martha. Hi, everybody. I am happy to be here um, to talk to you today about this topic, give your course a visual facelift, which where I'm going to be talking a little bit about using graphic design in your courses. Um, and the first thing I want to talk about is using graphic design for you, not so much for your students, but ways that you can think about um, design and visual elements for yourself as an instructor. So one of the most popular um, approaches for this is um, graphic syllabi. Um, and I would encourage you to um, maybe explore this as a practice for yourselves. It basically what it means is you take that long 15 page text wall of sil uh, syllabus um, and you think about it more as a graphically or visually designed um, experience. I have three examples up here on this slide. You can see there's lots of different variety in how people approach this. Um, everything from pretty formal, um, you know, kind of formal design to more um, creative kind of free form hand drawn. That's a, a, a syllabus of um, Kathy LeBlanc's actually from her TWP from here at um, PSU. Um, lots of great resources for this. And what I would say about it is for me, uh, using it as a practice, what I really love about it is A, it's a way for me to think really carefully about the important information I'm trying to convey to my students in the syllabus and what I need to edit. So um, you really have to, in order to do this well, you really have to make some critical choices about like, what do I need to keep and what do I maybe need to um, pare down a little bit? Um, and in doing that, it kind of makes you rethink your syllabus itself and what it is you want students to get out of it. Um, another uh, possibility for you is rethinking about um, just the presentation of an assignment. This is an assignment I did in a first year seminar at my previous institution a few years ago where we played a game in class that I made called Welcome to Selfie Land. Um, and I could have just put the instructions on a piece of paper and handed it out or on a slide with a bunch of text, but I decided I wanted to do something a little bit different to kind of heighten the experience, to make students realize that this was a little bit more playful and a little bit more immersive. Um, and so I created a guide, a visually designed guide, and I had a matching PowerPoint presentation that walked us through the steps of the game um, using a similar aesthetic and similar design elements. Um, so think about whether or not there's an assignment or an activity in class where you could actually infuse it with a little bit of visual design as a way to help your students um, understand a little bit more about what it is you're trying to do with that work. Um, designing for your students. So in addition, to thinking about how you can incorporate incorporate visual design into your work, of course, there's lots of interest in what can my students be doing um, with visual design in in class for assignments for projects, um, and so one of the most popular that some of you may have experience with is infographic assignments. They've definitely gained in popularity in the last ten years or so. When I've been working as I've been working with faculty, students have more and more fluency with them because um, I think they're hearing about them and getting these kinds of assignments even before they come to college in in middle school or in high school, maybe even in grade school. Um, these are a couple of infographic assignments completed by students. Um, uh, three of them are from here at PSU. I want to say the the Alice Paul as being feminist and abortion are all from um, the F word, I believe, with Kristen Stelmach. I think the other one I found online or somebody shared it with me. Um, but again, you can really get the sense of the variety of what students can produce here. Um, doing this work with students can be really um, creative and playful for them, but that doesn't mean it doesn't require some guidance. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Uh, this is the other side of the spectrum. So maybe you look at that infographic and you're like, oh, that's like more than I even want to think about. Um, but I want to encourage you to think about small ways that your students can use design. So this is an example from a class I taught um, that was a project based course where students were working with community partners um, to build um, kind of to do digital projects with them. And they had to produce a report, several reports during the course of the semester that they would share with me and with their partner. Um, and the, the version on the left is a draft that students turned in to me um, originally, just kind of, again, a wall of text, bullet points, um, very little visual elements to help me understand what it was I was looking at. And I kind of pushed back on the whole class and said, 
can you think a little bit about what a report, what you know, what we convey when we're creating a report and how the visual presentation of that makes an impact on your client and helps you in terms of um, kind of communicating to them what it is you're trying to, to share. And so the draft on the right is after they took it and applied a design template to it, um, create, as you can see, a, a table of contents emerged. They thought a little bit about the, the, the beginning of the report and sharing their contact information um, right at the, at the start. And, and the rest of the report was similar. So this is a really kind of low stakes way of getting your students just to think about visual communication and become a little bit more fluent and competent um, with, with this kind of presentation. Um, this is a, a link to, um, and this is all in the handout, by the way, This the link to this, um, to an assignment bank from a, an online digital storytelling community that I'm a part of called DS106. It's a crowdsourced assignment bank of um, basically media work in all different genres. This is specifically the design assignments. And it's a great place to go if you're looking for inspiration about how you might do this work with your students and particularly how you might work with um, students across various disciplines doing different kinds of visual work. Um, not every assignment in there is gonna translate one-to-one -to, -one to what you wanna do in a class and that's okay. What I would say is look to this for inspiration. Um, take an idea from here, see if there's something that you could tweak or change to make it fit with your particular goals. So all of that aside, um, you know, design work that, that you can think about as well as working with your students, I wanna talk about a few considerations, things for you to keep in mind. One of the things that questions you need to, to maybe start with is what do you already know about design and what do you already notice about design? We live in a world that is very designed, whether we, whether we you, know, you know, take notice of it regularly or not, but everything in your life to a certain degree, particularly products, um, are, are designed objects and many of the experiences we have are designed as well. So thinking about taking a critical eye to that and asking yourself to notice um, the design in your world is a really important practice. And I'm gonna tell you a hint, which is that you actually know more than you think you know. Um, even if you've never reflected upon it before, once you start to, you'll realize that you have just kind of osmosed this from living in a world where you're surrounded by design. Then you need to kind of think about what do you need to learn more about design um, in order to do whatever it is, whether it's a, a visual syllabus you want to create or an assignment you want your students to do. And you need to balance this a little bit with how much time you have and how much effort you and your students have can put into, into the work. Um, pre, how can you present your ideas and convey information visually? That's really at the crux of all of this. And my best piece of advice here, especially when you're working with students, is to look at examples, pull examples into the classroom, have them find examples, talk about what you're seeing in those examples, and really unpack sort of what's working, what isn't working, what would we do differently if this was our um, project. Um, one of the critical questions you're also going to be asking yourself, I mentioned this with the visual syllabus and that your students will have to kind of contend with is, um, you know, so much of design is about editing. It's about figuring out what's the most important and least important and not important um, information and how do you convey that information visually. So edit, edit, edit and talk to your students about what that means. And then when we're doing this work with students, I always recommend some kind of self-reflection or self-evaluatory component where they can talk about what they wanted to achieve and how well they were able to meet their goals, particularly if this is new to them and they don't have a lot of fluency and a lot of experience, giving them space to talk about what helped and what hindered their work, and also to talk about what they would have done if they had more skill, if they'd had more time, if they'd had more resources. I always like to, um, convey to students that in many ways, I'm more interested in sort of what their vision is than in necessarily their capacity to fully achieve that vision, particularly when you're not teaching a class about design, right? You're teaching a class like about climate change. And so we don't wanna burden the class and overwhelm the class with suddenly turning it into something that it isn't really, but that doesn't mean we can't make space for this kind of activity. And we can't make space for students to reflect upon what, what they still have to learn and what they'd like to do more of. Some tools that I um, recommend, and I'm gonna talk about Canva, I'm gonna show it in the last five minutes or so. A great tool for um, graphic design, PictoChart, an infographic design tool, 
Pixlr is an image editor and Figma, I will confess I haven't really used, but it's a pretty intriguing interface design tool. All of these are web-based um, and have free versions. So your students don't need to pay or install anything. Um, and then some resources, Pixabay, one of the great websites for free stock images and video, the Noun Project, where you can get free icons and graphics. Canva has a design school, which is an online kind of lessons about graphic design that you and your students can make use of. And then the link to DS106, those design assignments that I mentioned. I want to now just jump into um, Canva and show you a little bit about this tool, because this is one that our students have increasingly experience with. You may have bit seen it or heard it talked about. This is the handout for today that I designed in Canva. Um, over here on the left, you'll see in Canva, there's a bunch of little um, buttons, templates, elements, which include graphics, photo, photos, videos, and audio. You'll see some of these are kind of interactive. That's because you can now use Canva to create like a presentation. So there's some animation elements as well. Um, you can upload your own images and your own media to use. You can add text and you'll see there's all kinds of pre-designed text that you can take and use and modify. Um, they have an integrated photo library that you can use. When I mouse over images in the in, in an elements, um, it will tell me if with whether or not I have to pay extra to use them. So some elements in Canva, many of them are free, but some elements do require um, payment or to have a different um, uh, subscription. Um, there's styles that I can incorporate, like kind of little style guides that I can use with palettes and, and font uh, recommendations. I can insert QR codes, and then we're getting down into some more advanced features. Over here on the right is my um, is my, my thing that I've created. And just to let you know, I didn't do this from scratch. I mentioned this templates icon over here. This is the template that I just found in Canvas library. I copied it and began playing around with it to make my own worksheet um, or handout. Um, so I, I you know, kept some of the elements, like I liked this little green piece of paper tapey thing, but obviously I didn't need a picture of a bean. Um, so I modified it, I changed the colors a little bit, um, and I added to it. Um, I wanted to show you really quick. So for example, and I've kind of pre-picked something I wanna use. If I wanted to add a little indication to this handout that this is part of the 15 and in 15 program, I would come down here to, um, I picked this ice cream party text that I liked because I like this font. Um, so I searched for it. I just pick the, the, the element that I want to add, and it shows up over here on the right. I happen to know that this is what's called a grouped element. So you see it has um, three different kind of text boxes. You're invited to ice cream party and then the date. I don't want all of those. I just want the middle one. So I'm going to ungroup it, and then I'm going to get rid of the you're invited to and the date. And now I have ice cream party. And I'm going to come here and write 15 and 15. Um, oops. I think I added a apostrophe there. I can um, play around with the color of this text. So I think maybe I'm gonna do it in green. Canva has automatically detected the colors I'm using in, um, in my document. And because we have an account on Canva in the collab, we also have a, our own, these are the PSU colors, plus a red that we like to use in the collab. So I can pick from colors I frequently use, but it will also kind of intelligently notice what colors I've been using. I can make that a little smaller. I can put that here in the middle. If I want, I could rotate it. If I wanted to get really fancy, I could look around. I did this before. I could look around for a little clock to put in here um, to kind of um, play on the 15 and 15. That actually is 15 minutes, which is kind of nice. Um, make it a little bit smaller. Oops. Sometimes it gets hard when you have a lot of different elements, um, but if I click on this, you'll see I have this um, these four arrows, which always lets me move stuff around. So, um, and then the other thing I wanna do is put this text behind the clock. So I'm gonna go up here to position, or um, I'm gonna click on my text, go to position and send it backward, and, oh, forward until my clock is here. And now I can move my clock 
um, right over next to my 15 and 15. And so I've added a little extra element um, to my um, handout. When I'm ready to um, share this, there are a couple of ways I can do that. I can download it here. I can share it on social media. There's a service where I can pay to print it, but I would just re-download this as a PDF and share it with whoever I wanna share it with. And with that, I am going to stop sharing my screen because I think I am just about out of time. Well done, Martha. And uh, before y'all leave, I wanna remind you that you can get the recording and an informational handout at the link that I dropped in the chat. Um, and also there's a link there for appointments. If you just wanna learn like specific things about technology, start by putting in a tech ticket um, for an appointment with an academic technologist. But if you really wanna talk about an assignment, a syllabus using design to um, do something fun with your students, then absolutely go ahead and make an appointment from that link with Martha and she'd be happy to help you. Thanks for coming. I'm gonna stop the recording and we'll stick around in case anyone has any last minute questions. Other than that, we'll see you tomorrow.